As you recall in the previous training video, we learned how to assign resources to our task. One way was to do it is in the task form, which by the way, if you don't have up, let's come up here on the view tab to the split view group and check details and it should say task form. If it doesn't say it, then go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and there it is. Let me go ahead and click off. Because within the task form, there are three time fields that I want to go over and they are the duration, the units, and the work. The duration time field is for the task, the amount of time it's going to take to complete the task. For example, like review with subject matter experts, it's a total of one day. And the units and work are for the resources. Now, even though the units are in percentage, again, the representative of the amount of hours that that resource is going to be working each and every day on the task. 100% is 8 hours, 50% 4 hours, and so forth. So after assigning a resource, do you need to adjust and change any one of these three time fields? Like, for example, again, reducing the units because maybe Rider 1 can't work 8-hour days, but is only available for 4-hour work days. Now, to change this, you can either do it manually by checking manually scheduled, that is, if it's not already checked, because by default it should be checked if and when you added a task to your project, you didn't change the task mode like I did from manually scheduled to auto scheduled. As you recall in that training video, when I added my task, it was manual. So if I came over here in the task mode column, I can change it from manually scheduled to auto. And there you go. So let me go ahead and come down to task 8 because if it's manually scheduled, and I'm going to change this one from auto to manually scheduled, I want to show you that when you change one of these three time fields, how it affects the other time fields. Well, when you change the duration, it'll affect one of these two time fields in the formula, the units, the other two, and the work. That's only one that won't affect the other two in the formula. But I digress. Let me go ahead and convert this from auto scheduled to manually scheduled by either coming over here and changing it there in the Gantt chart. You see the push pin, and it reflects the change down below in the uh, task form. Or I can uncheck it there and click OK, and it updates it there in the uh, Gantt chart as well in the task mode column. So either way, just go ahead and uh, choose which way works best for you. Manually scheduled, click OK. You can see it again changes back to the push pin manually scheduled. So when I come down here, and I make a change like to the duration, and I go to two days, and I click OK, notice that the amount of work, instead of eight hours, is now in the formula. You've got the amount of time that he's working per day, 100%, so eight times two days is a total of 16 hours of work. So if I undo that, let's try the other time field here. How about uh, units? If I go down to 50%, saying that he can only work four hours a day, and click OK, how much work is that? Well, four hours for one day. Let's go ahead and hit undo. And then if I change the work and say, hmm, let's go up to have him work a total of, uh, let's do more than 24, let's do 48 hours. And then click OK. What do you think is going to happen? Nothing. I mean, for me, you'd think that for 48 hours, that that would reflect the duration of uh, six days. Because, I mean, you can't work 48 hours in one day, right? Let me go ahead and hit undo. So that is the only field that won't update in the formula here when you're in manually scheduled mode. Now, if you're not going to use manually scheduled mode, let me show you. When I uncheck it and I click OK, the task type field comes into play. It actually is now being applied when you update or make changes to any one of these three time fields. Let me show you. Manually scheduled, it's not in play. But uncheck it, it is in play. Let me go ahead and click OK. Now, what the task type is, is that it will determine what happens to the two of the three time fields with the option to control or have one of the time fields unchanging or, as it says, fixed. So, you know, as you recall when we had it manually scheduled, when I changed the duration, it updated one of these two time fields, right? But in auto scheduled mode with the task type feature available, by default it's in fixed units. So if I go ahead and I update the duration or the work, it won't change the units. In other words, I can control that field so no change comes over it. Or I can go ahead and say, okay, when I update the other two fields for units and work, update the other one, but don't update or change the duration because it's fixed. And then also you can say fixed work, so any changes you make to units or duration, it'll update the other one, but not the fixed work field, okay? So if I go back to fixed units, let's see how this works. So units won't be changed if I change the duration and go out to two days and click OK it updates the work because in the formula 8 times 2 equals 16 hours of work and I can go ahead and undo that and then if I made changes to the work and went to well let's go down to 4 hours there you go 
four hours of work and I click OK, it doesn't change the units and saying, OK, he's only available four hours. We can go to 50% because it's fixed units. It cannot change the units field. We have control over that. But it will go ahead in the formula, go to the, the other field, and say, OK, well, he could probably get this done in a half a day, four hours, because that's uh, the time he has down here that he's working. So let's go ahead and reduce it, the duration, since we can't reduce the units, to a half a day. Cool. Let's go ahead and undo that. And so you can go ahead and go over the other ones here, like fixed duration, where the uh, duration is always going to be one day, even though I come down here and I update the work to, well, let's go to 16 and click OK. Nothing. Still, he's working 16 hours in one day. In fact, if you want to go ahead and go up to, say, 32, let me type in 32 and click OK, it's not going to push that over because the duration of the task has been fixed. Sounds like some horse race. It's been fixed. Let's go ahead and hit undo and go back to eight hours for one day. And then we can go ahead and try fixed work. So with fixed work, it'll always be eight hours, even though I can come up here and go to two days and click OK. So now it's eight hours per day. And I can reduce that to one day and let's reduce that to 50%. Click OK. So it's still going to be eight hours of work in one day, even though he's at 50% because the work has been fixed. Let's go ahead and hit undo. So we're back to one day of duration at 100%, eight hours of work. So eight times one day is eight hours of work. Now, as far as deciding whether or not to use manually scheduled or automatically, well, even though in Project 2010 by default, it goes by manually scheduled first, all previous versions of Project didn't have this feature and were automatic. So I go ahead and stick with automatic, at least for me. Because the best use or benefit that I find from using the manually scheduled mode is for the summary task in top-down planning. Let me show you. So for example, if this was a new project and all I had were summary tasks, like research phase, outline phase, and so on, I didn't have the subtask. And so they're giving me these time frames saying, okay, well, the research phase should be about 12 days. And then I start adding in my subtask. If I have this in manually scheduled mode, let me go ahead and change it to manually scheduled. There's the push pin. Over in the Gantt chart, it gives me two summary tasks. The uh, black bar represents the manually scheduled summary task. This is manually right here. And then the blue bar down below represents the subtasks of that summary task that are in the time frame that take the exact same time as the manually scheduled summary task or less. So what would happen if I actually had it the manually scheduled summary task is 10 days, and I started adding the subtask, which right here you can see is 12, and I go ahead and I click off to accept that. Then what happens over in the Gantt chart is that the uh, second summary task changes color, and you can see it goes beyond the default of the black bar, which is the uh, manually scheduled summary task. So in short, the length of the two summary task bars show you whether or not you have any buffer available, and we don't. And so you can see it's gone out by a couple of days. Now, in addition to that, just for the sake of uh, laughs here, if all these were manually scheduled, okay, watch what happens. Well, you can't see it there. So let me go ahead and increase this out and really push it out. When you use the manually scheduled feature and one of the uh, subtasks of the summary task goes out, if that's the culprit that's causing the problem, for the second summary task here in red, it'll add fuzzies or dots around it here. You can see how it's outlined in a bunch of little squares there. That says that's the culprit. This one's fine. This one goes actually beyond the manually scheduled summary task. So that is if you had all of them manually scheduled, then you'll see the culprit over here of the manually scheduled that's um, pushing it beyond the manually scheduled summary task. So you can start off that way. Of course, you can always change it back if you don't want to go manually scheduled. And then it gets rid of the two summary tasks. And you just have the default summary task, which reflects the total days, the duration of all the subtasks down below. And if I come up here and I change that and I click off, it automatically converts it from an auto task scheduled mode to a manually task scheduled mode. And I get my two summary task bars. Because in auto schedule, project's doing the calculation. If I mess with it, then it says, okay, I'm washing my hands. I'll go ahead and give you two summary tasks, and you go ahead and keep track. So for me, my preference is the automatically uh, scheduled task mode, 
And to do that, as of course we learned in an earlier training video, if you want it to always be in that mode, when you create a new project, then you have to come up here and click on the File tab, go down to Options, come up here and go to Scheduled, and then come down here and say, OK, new task created will be not manually scheduled, but auto scheduled. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.